This is The Sattler Files. Welcome to The Sattler Files. I'm Murray Corf and with me is Neil Royal, retired inspector indeed, Neil Royal from uh, the WA Police. Welcome, Neil. Mr Corf, thank you so much for your kindness and uh, glad to be here. And um, I, I thought we might have a bit of a chat about uh, firebombing because I'm thinking of taking up a new career path. Oh, it's excellent. Incendiary at all. Yeah. Actually, no. it's, a growing, it's a bit of a growing trend if you've got a barbershop in Perth these days. Well, that was, that was the, uh, the segue, wasn't it? Um, that was the outstanding CCTV footage that we saw with that gentleman. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was, it was quite good. But we're, we're still no, no closer to knowing why he's continuing to do that. And so it's, it's, and it's, it's a barber shop. And it's the same shop twice mm. or three times, is it? Yeah, yeah. Because the first one, they ram raided it with a four-wheel drive, but again, good footage yep. uh, of the vehicle is. Mm. Um, they ran it until they smashed the doors in. Mm. Uh, then that other one that, that we just spoke about just then was the guy that smashed a hole in the window with something or other mm. and then took his time to fling in two Molotov cocktails. Mm. It did not. It took him ages to do it. He just wandered back and forth and just gradually yeah. threw them in. Yep. Um, and it looks like that was... Um, Metho or something, because have you seen where it caught fire? I did, but it was um, no less effective. Oh, yeah. It, it really uh, took off very quickly, didn't it? Yep. So those boys that run that barber shop, uh, I believe, are just about knocking on the door of being out of business. Mm. With their twice now they've had to repair the place, and this time it's $300,000 damage. And it's not the only one. There's been another one too, I think, in um, another suburb, another barber shop. Mm. Um, and a, a particular brand name barber shop too. Yes. Yeah, um, <clears throat> their insurance premiums might be a bit boisterous after this, wouldn't mm. it? I wonder, you know, <clears throat> when you have instances of fire bombs and ram ratings on tattoo parlours, mm. there's, there's an irresistible inference that those sort of things are, are aligned with perhaps some of the outlaw motorcycle gang yes. element. Yes, um, And that's, I don't suppose it's too outrageous to say that because it's most of it's common knowledge that they mm. do run those sort of things. They do. So I wonder why this is this barbershop thing a vendetta against who owns the barbershop or is it... Uh, Look, there are other ways to, to complain about a bad haircut, I think. Well, what's they say? The difference between a good haircut and a bad haircut's a fortnight? <laughs> Isn't it? It sort of grows back again. That's right. So, so don't get too excited no, just because you have a bad haircut right. to and, go and you know, firebomb the joint. Exactly, and twice. <laughs> yes. Good. They're not happy. They're not, they're, there's more to it than this. Of course there there's is. There's more to it than this. We, we, we are being quite um, flippant about it, but it's quite a serious thing because not only would could that shop have been damaged, but had the fireys not been um, alert and, and turned up promptly, the whole the whole complex could have gone up. And the police will rely more and more and more on good quality CCTV footage. And that that did actually have some very good footage, didn't it? it did uh, yeah. um, And look, you know, I, and we're seeing more and more of it. There was a um, a piece on television last night of a young lady walking in Kelmscott with a, yep. a very long strapped handbag, and she was. I watched the guy circle around her. Yep. And and grab the bag. Uh, she hung on to it, but. And the guy ended up with a mobile phone, I think. Um, but isn't that useful? That the police would be very grateful for that, I would have thought. Well, they'd be looking at the Rio team for some African country, I suggest, because the way this guy took to his scrapers after he grabbed the bag, <laughs> he would give, he'd figure in the 400 metres, I'd suggest, easily. Oh, without a he's, shadow. And he's without. a big boy. Yeah. Uh, and as, as you rightly say, the footage showed him uh, walking up the, the, foot, the footpath then across the road to the other side, mm. then walked past her and mm. kept going forward, then did the about turn and come running back towards her. Mm. So it speaks volumes for the good quality footage that people have got on their houses facing the street, mm. which is good. Because mm. um, in days gone by, it'd be, they'd have the camera just sitting over the front door, for example, see who's knocking at your door. Yeah. Now that goes down the driveway, out on the street. And, um, it's, and it's a good thing too. It is too. It has in the past has sparked um, criticism and complaint about invasion of privacy from other people, mm. and that's that's pertinent too in certain degrees. Well, because the um, the the um, what is it? The Listening Devices Video Surveillance Act is is quite definite in what you can and cannot do. Is that right? Absolutely. So, so if okay. you if you being a filthy little devil had your ta- camera out the at the back in case people were pinching lemons off your tree, and it happened <laughs> I have to a go story out, about that, and it happened to go, your camera happened to fire over the fence at a next door neighbour's pool. Mm. And where people are swimming and so forth, you'd be not, you'd be in trouble, 
Really? Is that even even fortuitous coverage is uh, perhaps for a word? Like you do intend it to be on your orange tree, and I'll tell you why I said orange tree in a minute. But the fact that it's got a wide angle lens and looks over the fence and and that sort of stuff that you can be in trouble for that. Absolutely, and you, wow. can, you can be in trouble for filming it uh, and audio as well. Uh-huh. Um, if you if you use it and send it anywhere, you prosecute it again. So yeah, it is it is quite. Is is quite um, well, I did definite in this legislation. It's good. It's worth having a read of that. I did not know that. And the reason I said orange tree was uh, I, I may have told you this story before, but uh, a couple of seasons ago, uh, our orange tree was quite uh, prolific in its fruit. Mm-hmm. And my wife and I were looking at this, and we were waiting for the oranges to go really orange, and you know, mm-hmm. go out there on a Saturday morning armed with a couple of old shopping bags to take the fruit off the tree, and it's all gone. Somebody entered the oh, property yep. <coughs> and stripped the tree of every orange that we had. Absolutely every orange. It would take them some time, no doubt. Well, I don't know how many of them were there. Yeah, but true. But um, uh, what's happened since then is that I now have a six-foot fence with a lockable gate mm-hmm. um, to separate the, the criminals out of my backyard. Yep. But I was, uh, and I am, in the process of, of getting some pricing on on uh, surveillance cameras. Yep, not uh, cheap. For, no, they're not. Uh, but we were going to go the whole hog, have it, you know, look at the backyard and the down the side of the house where the orange tree is because mm. I will find those people that deprive me of my oranges. Those citrus the, criminals. The, <laughs> Get citrus them. Citrus criminals, that's it, you got it. And also, obviously, the front and looking down the driveway. Yep. But now I'm a bit concerned because although it won't look in, onto a pool, it does, it will of just because it's there and a wide-angle lens will actually look over the fence of the next-door neighbour. You'd probably want to knock on his door mm. and say, this is what you're doing. Yeah. Um, because if he takes offence to it, you, you can be directed by the police to remove it. Is that right? Yeah, See? so you need to have a bit of a, bit of a look. And yeah. it's there for the – because – uh, it's it's there for the people who want to use it for other things other than protection of their property. Mm. The voyeurism of some folk out there is quite extensive, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, you'd need to know why is why do you have to have a camera shining into my pool and barbecue area? Well, you, it won't be because your wife's so attractive because she's not. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's just those that come visiting on the weekends and so forth. That's so right. yeah, so you got to be want careful. to know when you're having a beer. Yeah, you have to be careful what you do and how you do it. Mm. Um, Indeed, you need to shop around too also for your t- CCTV stuff because it needs to be recordable, mm. obviously. Yeah. Um, and you need, there's a couple of ways you can go. You can go to a, a, a battery backup one um, or you go into the – of course, it goes into a computer, obviously. Mm. Um, and then whether it's it runs c- continually – or it's mm-hmm. movement sensor triggers mm. it, or it's on time lapse, or whatever. There's a whole range of things you need to do. But at the end of the day, when it comes to providing the police with what you've got on your camera, it wants to have some vision on there. Who it's identifiable. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, so you're you're really, your time. You want some high quality stuff. Yep. And and look, the price of it is. Uh, a lot better than it used to be, but it, as you say, it's still quite expensive, isn't it? Well, in recent times, I've had um, one of my sons needed to look at um, TV for his house because there was a bit of a problem had with someone vandalising his house, and uh, the, just to do the front of his house, the starting price was a thousand. Mm. So he's since done better than that, and he's got four cameras for four hundred and eighty dollars. Mm. And when you go to places like, uh, oh. Well, do the Joe, good guys Joe, sponsor this program? Do yeah, they? They should. Well, they want they to should. because they just give them a free one. Yeah, um, those sort of places there. That don't, yeah. get, don't go to Dick Smith's because it won't be open. No, that's um, right. As of yesterday, I yeah. think it was. Yeah. So you stand there knocking on the door, and they'll be all inside there shaking their heads at you. Say, no, <laughs> no, no. But shop around. But it has to be. It has to be evidence quality footage. Yes. Yeah. That's where the banks fell in a big hole over the years and years gone by when they had it on videotape. Yeah. Because it's going on a loop. Yep. and they have it running continually. Do, 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 do. Then they finally get somebody who's doing a stick up. So you go and draw down on the on the footage, and it's that grainy and horrible, and you have got mm. no idea. You got no idea. Yeah, well, of course now it's all the digital stuff, yeah, and absolutely. it's really, and it's really good, good and clear. Yep. But just getting back to uh, the CCTV coverage of the young lady in, uh, I think, Kelmscott, where, where yep. that gentleman, and we use the term loosely, uh, deprived her of her handbag. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I, it seemed to me that she really wasn't aware of her surroundings. If somebody was circling me like that, I'd have been on my guard, really and truly would have been looking over my shoulder all the time, wondering what he was doing. People are very trusting. This is broad daylight, by the way. Mm. So yeah, it's not, absolutely. It's not at 11 at night, it's broad daylight. She walked <clears> in the middle of the street in a suburban area. Uh, she's obviously, the way she's swinging the bag up, back and forth, she's really comfortable in it in her mm. surroundings, mm. Um, who's to say he's well, gone past, morning, and kept going and sort of thing, and she's ignored it, and then he's come running back the other way like he's forgotten something. So th- if if you're not suspicious, you would think those are the normal things that happen. Oh, he's come past there. Oh, he's forgotten something. He's gone home again. Now he's gone back again. And who knows what he's saying at the time, like, oh, silly me or whatever it is, mm. Uh, mm. and then whack. Um, mm. As it happens, what she's 34 years of age and hung on to the mm. bag, got dragged to the street, got, Face first on the on the road, mm. um, didn't let go of the bag. Um, he ended up with her phone. Yeah, I think so. Uh, at the end of the day, her her youth has probably saved her from serious injury because mm. um, these morons generally target uh, that really the soft the more, target, the, the more so infirm, forth. Yep, yep, the 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 elderly and so forth. And um, I think the police came up on TV last night and gave some guidance to people when they're wandering around with their handbags and so forth, which. You know, they've got to do that, I suppose, but um, wandering around in patrol cars looking for bad people wouldn't be a bad idea either. No. So they're saying, you know, keep your handbag close to your body, under your arm sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, don't have lots of money in it. Well, don't we have a bag for we haven't got money? But um, <laughs> don't have lots of money in it. Yeah. Um, if you're carrying your mobile phone, most of your phone has a uh, some sort of trackable yeah, the, uh, ID find, number. Find my phone application. That's, that's yeah. what it is, it? Yeah, mm. that sort of stuff. Um because what's, what's good to phone to this guy now? Where's he going to go to cash converters and try and flog it, or what's he going to do? Because they'll well, wake up to all that. Well, cash converters wouldn't touch that. No. There's no, no way they would. No. Um, so what's what's the point in having the phone? What are you? No, the, well, there's nothing. No point in having no, the phone. No, he's just got something, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. He might have thought it was a wallet. <laughs> he might have. So what's what's the general thought about something like that? I mean, do you just let him have it? I mean, I would, because I, I just don't want to enter into a conflict with somebody much younger than me and uh, that's what they're take that's my what money they're, that's what they're bank they're banking on most of the time that people will give in i mean mm. and when it comes to shops and banks and those sort of things the, the employees are told if you get stuck up stick up don't die for it give mm. them what they want let them go mm. but human nature such as it is you know, uh, it's just a natural reaction and retaliation to hang on what's yours because you know, you know it's not right and you shouldn't be getting it and mm. um, it's, it's fortunate in this case that this lady did hang on, didn't get a shoulder dislocated, mm. um, didn't get a nose broken when she hit the ground and he didn't come back and give her a smack and take it anyway. No, well that's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, and uh, the fact that I suppose that had it been a nighttime situation, it might have been substantially different because mm. you've got the cover of darkness to sort of get away and as it is now in, in this broad daylight um, a fence. There's lots of stuff. Him running around, and it's very, very clear. Mm. So someone has got a real good setup on there because the police must have gone knocking on the doors of all the houses. Well, they go it. looking for a start, see where the cameras are, mm. then knock on the doors mm. and ask for a look at their footage. And that's it's walk up start from then because a lot of bods, as you've seen with this one here, mm. have lots of courage of the street. They might be having a problem in the street with blokes doing burnouts and so forth, or people yeah. curb crawling, or who knows. Yeah. So they've got the camera out there looking, and it's mm. turned up trumps for this lady. And I hope. At the end of the day, the fellow in the pink shirt mm. who um, does these Bolt... Um, the Usain Bolt the Usain act. Bolt impersonation. Yes. I hope at the end of the day someone figures who he is and yeah. he gets his comeuppance. Well, I agree with that. And it, it, so it, CCTV has proved useful in other areas as well. Just before Christmas there was that case of the, uh, a rather um, portly lady... Uh, going up to verandas after she'd been following around a parcel delivery oh, yeah, service yeah. and uh, just nicking whatever was there. Yep. And yep. the security camera not only got a very good photograph of her or picture of her, but also the number plate on the car. Yep, outstanding. And that is really good. And the, the, the police are rubbing their hands together with these sort of things because it, you have witnesses. Yes. That's it. It's, yes. It's, it's, you beauty. <laughs> Irrefutable, isn't it? Absolutely. So, so it, it really, at the end of the day, it, it, it might cost you a little bit. And look, the thing that has absolutely uh, amazed me is what you've just told me about um, the Surveillance Act. I'm going to have to be very, very careful. I mean, I know my neighbours pretty well, so I'm, I'm sure they're not going to going to worry too much about it because their pool's over the other side anyway. But, yeah. but I didn't know that, and I, I, I really thought that you were entitled to... to 
to put surveillance on your on your property, and if it spilled over into the neighbours, well, that was just bad luck. Yeah, just have a squiz and Google the um, mm. um, listening devices and surveillance act, mm. okay. and yeah, it's quite intriguing stuff. And there's very very substantial fines. Wow, like okay. ten thousand, fifteen thousand, heavy duty Is stuff. That right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The heavy duty stuff. Okay. And you get the fine for doing the act, and then if you on pass it to somebody else, well, they get you again. So, <laughs> oh, the, is that right? oh yeah, it's double a, dipping. It's very heavy duty stuff. So it's worth all having a look to protect yourself well, while you're protecting your property. It's a really sad day if you don't learn something, and I have just courtesy of your good self learned something. So thank you for that. It probably works out reasonably worthwhile. I come in here from time to time, <laughs> yeah, Mary. At least you're learning something. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Neil, we're going to take a very short break and we'll be back more with um, Neil Royal after this. This, this is The Sapphire. Devright Homes, when you're looking for attention to detail and a uniquely designed home to suit all your needs. At Devright Homes, we only build a limited number of homes per year, so we can truly focus on what you want out of a prestige home builder. We've continually won awards for excellence, with a record number of wins last year and the proud winner of the Australian Townhouse Villa of the Year. While we love building homes to suit each client, we pride ourselves on designing homes that take into account the special safety needs of some of our clients. If you have a dream, we can make it come true. Talk to Jay Mangano and find out more about Devright Homes at www.devright.com.au. You need banking services of any type. Secure Force Protective Services run a cash and transit service here in Perth. For as little as $25, why risk your employees travelling to the bank when Secure Force can do it for you? Give us a call at 94405011. You only ever want the best for your family, and no one understands this better than the caring ladies at Marina Perslow & Associates. That's why we offer Australia's leading prepaid funeral plan. It means your family won't be left with the added strain of organising your funeral and everything will be taken care of. All the little details. Your family will have the support they need with a woman's touch and gentle understanding. So leave them with loving memories and leave the rest to us. Visit marinaperslowfunerals.com.au or phone 9388 1623. I'm John Hughes. If you want a hassle-free, very enjoyable and happy experience when buying your next vehicle, Come to me in Victoria Park. I personally train all my salespeople to be non-pushy, friendly and professional and we always strive to provide first class before and after sales service to all of my customers. So choose your dealer before you choose your car. That's John Hughes in Victoria Park, your car buying destination. DL6061. This is the Sattler Profile. Welcome back to the Sattler Files and talking with Neil Royal um, about all sorts of things, police matters, and we've got a full house here today. We've got our executive producer, Howard, is with us, and Despoon, of course, so it's a busy day. Well, the ship's under control, you see. There's, That's got, right. You've got the skipper and you've got the builder. Yeah. Uh, now you've just got you and I, the oarsman. That's right. And standing by for Despoon to say, ramming speed, boys, <laughs> and off we go. That's right. Off we go. Oh, dear. So speaking of ramming speed and speaking of other things and all things police and interesting. What about the old postcard bandit? He's on the way back, they tell us. Yes, courtesy of the Pilatus Porter police aircraft yes. uh, all the way from Brisbane. They obviously weren't going to risk him on a commercial flight at all. That would have cost a fair bit taking the the Pilatus. Did I say Pilatus Porter? Yeah. Oh, well, that was not right. It is a Pilatus. It's a, eh? It is. It's a Pilatus PC-12. Yes. Not the Porter. God, I don't know what's going on. The Alzheimer's is playing up today. Um so they've sent the the Pilatus over to Brisbane to pick him up, not wanting to risk a um, uh, a, a commercial flight back to Perth. But it's going to have to stop probably twice on the way back, depending on winds and stuff like that. So where would they stop? Cooperpedia would be a good one. That aircraft is, is quite unique, as you, you'd be keen more worried about than I am. But I saw the business case submission when they actually were buying those because yeah. um, the RFDS have got. Lots of them, yeah, they have. Um, and lots of countries throughout the world have got, got a whole swag of them as well because it has the beauty it can fly at 30,000 feet yep. um, it can fly at near 85 90 kilometers an hour or something rather it's it's very ridiculous a bit, bit more than that <laughs> or, but low, low real low speeds that they can oh i see what you mean low speeds yes yeah, so they, they, so they can, can track vehicles and so forth they wanted a vehicle an aircraft that could do all those sorts of things and carry a whole section of trg so it takes about 12 people in there thereabouts yep, yep. um and 
lots and lots and lots of miles to gallon, <laughs> apparently. It does. It's a very efficient aeroplane, and it, you're quite right. It has uh, uh, incredibly low-speed mm. uh, performance, and it's not bad up in the in the atmosphere getting along fairly quickly either. Some uh, some unkind people that I lunch with occasionally down at the uh, the airport have referred to it as the, the commissioner's taxi. But He's I got two of them. Yeah, he has. <laughs> doesn't matter where it takes off that. Somebody will say, there goes the police commissioner's taxi. Well, if it comes to doing police business throughout the state and you've got two aircraft, why would you go in commercial? Well, that's true, but it is... When you, well, in this case, it probably would have been okay because there would have been a minimum of two on board that, two coppers, wouldn't there? Absolutely, yeah. Plus the pilot. So there might, might have even been more, um, plus the prisoner. So you'd be looking at probably, say, four or five people. So when, by, the time, by the time you have add that all up and, and buy five seats on a commercial flight... Yeah, probably economically, it probably works out pretty well. No, I mean, I'm all. I, don't get me wrong. I I absolutely support the coppers having aircraft because yeah. I think that's that's just amazing stuff. They should have more. They should have another helicopter, frankly, as well. That's because you're an air person. It's like, oh, it's like me saying we need more motorbikes, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is true because we do. But yeah, and but I don't. Know, what do they do then when they get extradite people from Singapore and extradite people from New Zealand, extradite people from places where the Pilatus won't get to? They've got to go commercial, don't they? And they sit them down the back near the toilets, yep. and they they lock them together. Yep. And uh, that's what happens, and they sit yeah, down the back. I think the the the, the issue with um, picking them up from Singapore or anywhere else is not so much the range of the the, the aeroplane, but more about customs and immigration and all that sort of stuff because they've all got to go through that True. regardless of which way it goes. But the the um, the air wing came in uh, very handy yesterday with that gentleman um, taking a high speed run down to Bunbury. Yes, in the fair lane, I think it was. You think a fair lane because they, they don't make fair lanes anymore, do they? Um, no, they don't. Not the Fords. No, well, uh, they still make the Statesmen. It's only going to be a good ad or a bad ad because the fair lane that made it to Bunbury is a good ad. <laughs> um, and he would have stopped and refueled about eight times. So <laughs> I was surprised the police didn't get him four or five times before that. <laughs> Oh, look, that's very cruel. But know, look, but the helicopter tracks it and it's yeah. just amazing. There's nowhere to hide. There isn't. There isn't really, no, is there? No. And with the um, night sun and all the rest of it there and uh, the the um, fleur, fleur, forward-looking infrared. infrared. Yep, mm-hmm. beautiful stuff. Beautiful it is. Stuff. Um, and it's like looking at them in daylight, isn't it? Just too, yeah. And and I've seen them sort of uh, from the helicopter. There's a baddie going through the bush and, the, and they're saying to the cops on the ground, 10 feet to your right. Yep. 10 feet to the left. Yep. There he is. You're on top of him. One Absolutely. step forward and yep. you smack him in the head. He's sitting under that bush there to your left. <laughs> and you it. see the cops standing there looking around. <laughs> they have no idea yeah. that he's there. That's right. And if they take Kane home with them, then the cops end up with long arms because they're trying to hold those dogs back because they know where they are. And I'm not sure that I'd relish the idea of a canine coming after me with its teeth bared. And, <laughs> no, um, well, there's a couple of dogs that they use. They have um, their uh, general purpose dogs, mm. GP dogs. They're the bitey ones. Are they? And I learned, yes, oh, indeed. So, and I learned early in the piece when we went to a few pub fights and so forth that when canine section turned up, they're totally indiscriminate. They don't care who they bite. <laughs> they they don't bite look at your uniform they and your number? They couldn't care less. <laughs> and if you get in the way, they're going to latch onto you as well. They are outstanding. They really are. They're great dogs. Yep. And then they're there's really cadaver dogs and there's all sorts. There's, there's, yeah. there's um, drug dogs and oh. uh, that there. They are a really a big a big asset to the police force. They are absolutely. You can see that, and some of those television programs that you see them on the those Kalgoorlie cops was one. Yep. Um, and I distinctly remember one episode where they um, a couple of um, people went off into the bush and he just let the dog off the leash, and he found them as you might expect he would, and there was all sorts of cries of. Oh, so, save me, save, save me. me, save me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I give in. That's right. <laughs> it was just fantastic to watch. So, yeah, look, there's a lot, lots and lots of things like that. But one of a bit of a mystery this week that came out um, ding dong, bell, pussies in the well. It wasn't a pussy, though. It was a person, wasn't it? Down the yeah, well. What happened to him? He's de- he's, he says to the police, because they've got some, they've got a baddie now, they've got a 26 year old they've charged today, mm. that this guy said he was walking along past the church. Um, all he remembers walking near the church and woke up in the well, mm. seven metres down with all broken things. Mm. Um, and that's all he can remember. Right. Well, that being the case, how did the cops get the baddie? 
<laughs> is there CCTV footage there? Is he down the world with him? You can't get out. Uh, what's? How do they get this? And somebody look over a fence and saw it was Jim Spriggs. I saw him do it. I wonder how. I'm I'm dying to hear the outcome of this. Firstly, people, how the police got this guy, mm. and if it's another uh, plug for CCTV footage, goody. Mm. Um, other than that, I'm also dying to hear why this guy can't remember anything other than walking there and waking up in the well. Mm. He went to remember some more things, in my opinion. And I think he, I think he might have done too for these guys to get this baddie. Yeah, <laughs> he might I, even know the baddie. Oh, gee, there's that's drawing a long bow, isn't oh, I'm it? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Just, I'm just clutching at straws here. <laughs> um, Suspicious well, as we are. May perhaps he had a moment of transient global amnesia, and that's a thing. Transient global TGA. Mm -mm. I'll be using that in future if I can remember all those big long words. Well, it's actually a thing. A transient global amnesia. And I will give you an example of it because it I'm not joking. It really is a heard thing. Of that. It, well, it is. Um, it happened to my wife. She was at the shopping centre in Karina and came out and was looking for a car. And suddenly she had no idea where she was where the car was, what she'd just been doing, what she was supposed to be doing. Wow. And it was she was like that for probably about 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, wow, that's pretty frightening. It was. And so Were you there? She, no, unfortunately I wasn't. Um, but it, it came back after a while and I said, well, best we go and have a chat to our doctor, Dr. Robert Liddell. G'day, Rob, if you're listening. Um, he said he sees many cases of that because uh, he does uh, um, accident emergency at Murdoch, um, he said he sees many cases of that and people sometimes it lasts for 10 minutes, five minutes, something like that, or it can go on for days. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's, that, that is a thing. I didn't know it was called that, and I, I've actually been with some people who've had that. <laughs> I'll bet most at, of them. At, yeah, <clears throat> at, at the footy when someone's turned to buy a beer, they can't find their wallet for the love of They just hunt around, or, or, searching every pocket and so forth, until yeah. somebody finds theirs first. So oh, you so they get out fumbled. Ex well, exactly. That mm. might be transient global amnesia, though. Yeah. Where the hell's my wallet? It might be in the car. <laughs> that's yeah, but, right. Oh, <laughs> Well, there's that's a, you can use that, and that really is a thing. It's um, I'll it's be accused of it next. You watch. <laughs> I'll be next. You, you try and out fumble, do you? No, no, no. I pay up front. I do. Yeah, <laughs> you're Usually, the honourable one. Yeah, I pay up front there. And the, the trick, of course, is <clears throat> if you get in first, mm. then you can sort of relax for the rest of it. But mm. there's also danger in that because if there's a bunch of you there. You get in first, others will fritter away. Yes, they'll say, thanks for the dance, and off we'll go. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've got a dash, and, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's eight people there, so it'll be eight rounds, and so if you're seventh and you fritter away, suddenly your round comes around earlier, Yes, and you think, hmm, I've been nutted here, but uh, that happens from <laughs> time right, to time. That's right, yes, I've just got to go to the toilet yeah, and never, never see them again. again. <laughs> That's it. That's why in <laughs> casinos throughout Las Vegas and those joints there, they allow you to smoke in the casino. Oh, right. And then smoke in the restaurant and smoke in the toilet and smoke in the elevator, wherever you like, because they don't want you going outside having a smoke because you might not come back. Nah, okay. Way yeah, to go. Works for me. <laughs> <laughs> works for me. Go outside and stay outside. Don't care. So you reckon the guy that was found in the well, the circumstances around that since the cop has got him, got his, uh, well, supposedly his alleged assailant, got him pretty quick. See, yep. There's and a lot of that. I'm dying to know how. Mm. And if it's footage... Get on your coppers, get out and say, look at this. Mm. And that encourages us to put stuff up there, makes it a, lot, a whole lot easier. Mm. Um, but I got, I got this hit, I believe in my heart of hearts. Mm. I mean, so cynical yet so young, you're going to say, aren't you, Murray? I but, was, um, yeah. I think he might have known his assailant. Well, yeah, there's always that, isn't there? Yes. <clears throat> the, what are the, what are the, what's copper speak for that? The, uh, the, victim, uh, the victim knew his assailant or the victim... And the assailant knew each other, something like that. Yeah, no, that. it's all these, these movie type. They were, known to each other. they were known to each other, that's right, yes. Oh, good. Yeah. But it's it's a unique one, isn't it? He's, he was on his way to church, I reckon, and uh, the guy didn't want him robbing the poor box, so he threw him in a well. And put the lid back on the well. Yeah, just so the, that he could. The well had a lid on it, so Bods would not fall into it. <laughs> so he's taken the lid off and, thrown and him threw him in. down the well. So yeah. did he see him approaching and then run and take the lid off, or did he grab him and then whilst holding him, then take the lid off and then chuck him down the well. Mm. Um, this guy doesn't know because he doesn't remember. No, no. Transient global amnesia. I'm dying to see the outcome for this in, in transcript from court. Yes, indeed. 
Now, look, we're nearly out of time. Um, now, you went to uh, to have a <coughs> look at the footy, didn't you, and things? I was on this program last week about Pratt and told you I was going to do that. Yes. So this is I know this is super journalism for you, that you <laughs> found that I've been to Adelaide to watch the Dockers put up a, a courageous fight for two quarters against the Crows, mm. had checked out the Adelaide Oval for the first time, stayed in the hotel as the team, offered advice, timely and otherwise, to <laughs> Ross and some of the players whilst they were walking past in the hotel. They would have been grateful for that, would various, <laughs> various things, yes. Yeah. They were all encouraging things like, um, go get them, Dave Mundy, mm. uh, no prisoners, Ross Lyon, all those sort of things that you... you Words of encouragement as well. Well, I'm a 20-year member. I'm allowed to say I own one or two of them, I reckon. Um, <laughs> so, so, after sorry, everything no, you've I paid. I, I want some of my money back. <laughs> Um, so you went there and, and very nice Adelaide Oval. And the, the, the Crows, they, they love their, the, the supporters love their footy as much as we do, do over here. Yeah, of course they and do. we're the easy beats of the competition currently. Mm. So the Crows are on a roll and they get up there. 48,000 turned up to watch them flog Is us. That right. 48,000. 48, it only holds 52 Adelaide Oval. Oh, yeah. And it was dirty chocolate block. a good turnout, isn't it? Absolutely. And the, yeah, they just want to see their team play and let's see their team win. And it was very quiet for about two quarters when oh, <coughs> it wasn't really happening. And there's a lower score that the Crows have, that have posted in well, X number of years, only two, mm. three goals, two or something or other for mm. half a footy. But then it all sort of changed a bit. It all went down the toilet. Mind you, having said that, I wouldn't have said that the Eagles did all that very well on the weekend either. I mean, they they played two quarters of football as well. Fortunately, they're right too. Yep, and they yeah, kick ten goals in the last helps a bit, doesn't it? But uh, they were like the Dockers kicked sixteen points for the game. Could be sixteen goals, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, they're certainly, they 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 can't kick in league football. Mu- to That's save their right. lives in a lot of occasions these days. Mm. Uh, Kennedy had the yips. So these he, things he happen. Did. Kennedy couldn't couldn't no. buy a goal. Could he? No, no. But it so, was uh, an interest, a good game because we won. Mm, it didn't rain, did it? <laughs> no, no, it, it was good. <laughs> so this weekend, the Greater Western Sydney Giants, mm. who are on a bit of a roll at the moment too. Jesus, are they ever? They're going to come over here and take us to task. So mm. I might go along and then offer some more advice from the boundary. Mm, that's um, right. Tomorrow. Take a megaphone this time. No, they throw you out bring one of those in. <laughs> Do <laughs> they? don't like it at all. <laughs> <don't> <laughs> so, so I'll go and see what happens from there. Okay. And it's just what, what? When's Mother's Day on Sunday? Sunday is Mother's Day. We, <coughs> we'll all uh, be buying Mother's Day presents. So it's Saturday night that I'll be sort of there. Mm. You, look, you'll enjoy it regardless, won't you? I know. That's why I go. Of course it is. That's why I go. You're a dedicated Dockers supporter and you, you'll go and enjoy it. That's the plan. <laughs> they owe me. They <laughs> do. <laughs> Neil, fabulous talking to you as always and look forward to catching up with you again soon. Let's do it again this time next week. Why don't we do that? Let's do it. More, on, on, you, mate. more on the Saddler <laughs> Files shortly. This is the Saddler Files.